Alright, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we're taking one more look at Hurricane Lara. Now, before I get started with this video, though, I would ask that you do subscribe if you do like weather-related content, and also make sure to share this video with your friends, family, and social media. Now, I'd also ask that you check out our very exciting Patreon page in the description in the pinned comment down below, where we post a lot of cool posts, and you can also help support the channel. That's also where you can find our very exciting Discord server and Facebook groups in the same location. Now, for today's comment of the day, the... Atlantic Ocean is kind of quiet behind Lara, so I want to know, when do you think our next tropical system will come in? Let me know in the comments down below, and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. Alright, now let's look at our current satellite imagery, and the one thing I need to say right now is that Lara has undergone rapid intensification overnight. We actually have a Category 2 hurricane approaching Category 3 status, uh, and this storm is intensifying extremely fast. We now expect a strong Category 3, or potentially a Category 4, to strike Louisiana and Texas. This is a very serious situation, and we're expecting catastrophic impacts for the coasts of Louisiana and portions of the coast of Texas as well. Uh, you can check out the National Hurricane Center's page for that. They've also mentioned that there's going to be catastrophic storm surge. Very, very dangerous situation. I really hope that all of you evacuate. Uh, also, don't forget to bring your pets. I saw somebody posting that as well. It's a very good point. Don't forget to bring your pets if you do evacuate. Uh, but anyway, this storm looks extremely intense. Uh, and this looks like a storm that is undergoing rapid intensification. Obviously, we know it is. Uh, very tall clouds all throughout those grays and whites. And you can see the eye developing. This storm is just rapidly intensifying. Very dangerous situation. And it still has hours and hours to go. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to move on. We're going to take a look at the low pressure location, uh, the cone forecast, the intensification forecast. And then we're going to start taking a look at some of our model guidance. All right, now, as we take a look at this low pressure location, you can see it's in the middle of the Gulf. I also want to take this moment to mention that we are going to be doing a live stream. I don't know how much I'm going to be talking in it, but I want to keep a live stream going throughout the day today and possibly throughout the night tonight. Uh, so that's my plan as of right now, just so you guys can kind of use it as a reference for current radar, things of that nature. And I'm going to try to get on there and talk a lot as well. So I will link that stream once it's up to the pinned comment, so, and probably the description too, so you can try to check that out. Uh, so I just wanted to mention that, but here's our low pressure location again in the middle of the Gulf. We have many hours for this storm to remain in an intensification phase where it's intensifying rapidly. Uh, this storm, like I said, uh, is looking like it's 50, 50, whether it's going to be a category three or a category four, in my opinion. Let's look at the cone forecast now. And as you can see, we expect it to be a major hurricane actually by maybe 1 PM today, actually, which would be category three status at least, and then remain a a major hurricane until at least landfall at about 1 a.m. on Thursday is when the low pressure center and the eye of the storm should be coming on shore. That does not mean that's the beginning of the impacts, uh, but it is the beginning of the worst of the impacts. Uh, so let's go ahead and what we're going to do, well, I guess I should mention also, this one is going to move north and then eventually eastward and all the way to the east coast where it could intensify into a post-tropical storm. Uh, which would mean more winds and more rain, but really it's going to lose that tropical status. Uh, so if you're in this cone, look out. I mean, along the East Coast as well, the Mid-Atlantic, you could see some rainfall and some pretty strong winds. So this one is not going to be done once it makes landfall. There's many, many more impacts to come. Now what we're going to do is we're going to move on. We're going to take a look at that intensity guidance, and then we're going to start getting into our... Uh, our model where we're going to take a look at the wind speed on landfall, the simulated radar, simulated satellite, and things of that nature. All right, now here we are taking a look at our intensity guidance. As you can see, there is quite a few of those models that show it hitting category four status. I'd say probably about four or five models. And then we have maybe like five, six, seven models that keep us at a category three status. There is two that show no intensification from this point on. Don't really know how much uh, I believe that there is that slim chance that it stays under category three status. But at the way it's intensifying and the way it's looking right now, I would say that's under a 10% chance at this point, unfortunately. We can always hope for the best, though, uh, and it is a possibility. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to move on and take a look at our HWRF model, which has been excellent as far as the track. It has been excellent, actually, at forecasting this one. So let's go ahead and look at our first frame here, and this is going to be around the time I'm making this audio, so it's going to be a little bit earlier probably than the time you're making this video, uh, but we have a strong ring of winds. Usually to the very eastern edge, we have the strongest winds, or that's how it has been with this storm, uh, but it's kind of finally getting a ring around it where there's pretty equal strength. 
Uh, that's that eye wall developing, and we're getting a very strong storm at this point. So very uh, aesthetic is what I'm looking for with a very tropical, very strong system here. Uh, and you can just make out where the eye is and the eye wall and everything. Let's go ahead and move it towards this afternoon at about 2 p.m. Again, the maximum knots you can see on the top right there uh, is 104. Uh, but really, you can see that it's purples with very, very light pinks at the very maximum here, which means just around 100. Uh, but as we move towards about 2 p.m., you start to see those reds pop up. And that's where we starting, we're starting to see the 110 knot winds plus here uh, just ahead of landfall. And then just ahead of landfall. So that was like pretty close to landfall. This is just before landfall. We are seeing uh, maybe 120 knot winds. Very, very extreme situation here a very major storm just before landfall and what we're going to do is we're going to move on and we're going to take a look at our next frame after landfall take a look at some of the wind and then we're going to start taking a look at what the simulated radar would look like the simulated satellite and then we're going to start taking a look at things like maximum winds uh storm surge forecast rainfall forecast things of that nature All right, now here we are taking a look at that frame after the landfall, I guess you could say. And this one's when it's over land. And you can still there's, there's still these purples, which means 64 to 96 knot winds all throughout that very, very western Louisiana range. Uh, so this is going to still be a very dangerous storm once it's on land. And the, the major impacts could spread very, very far inland there. Uh, I do expect that this one is going to, again, uh, unfortunately bring catastrophic impacts for a lot of Louisiana and a good chunk of Texas there as well, especially with the storm surge. Uh, we're expecting the potential for 10 to 15 foot storm surge in the very, very maximum area. Uh, and we're expecting storm surge to reach 30 miles inland, which is the same distance of DC to Baltimore uh, is what people were comparing it to. So that is a very, very major statistic there and should really tell you just how major the situation we are in is right now. And again, 10 to 15 foot storm surge is absolutely catastrophic. And unfortunately, uh, this storm is just looking very major, especially compared to even ye uh, yesterday, what we were expecting, but days prior as well. The storm is definitely overperforming. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the simulated radar real quick. And I just wanted to show this so that you could see how far the heavy rains would spread throughout Louisiana, portions of eastern Texas. Uh, and it's those storms, those outer bands there for very eastern Louisiana, where I'm especially worried about tornadic activity. We see this pretty frequently. Uh, and here in Virginia, we had a tropical system uh, come through just a few weeks ago, and it brought maybe like five to ten tornadoes for my area, and actually some people passed away. So these tropical systems, when they bring tornadic activity, it can be quite major uh, and could be, you know, obviously a very major threat. Uh, to livelihood, property. So you're going to want to look out for that as well. It's not only the inner eye wall that you want to look out for. It's those outer bands can bring major impacts as well. Here's the simulated satellite, uh, which is just to show you just how major this storm is going to look just before landfall. Uh, this obviously on this on this map, I would say this is probably looking like a category four, category three, four. Uh, very strong tropical system here. Very wide eye wall. This is a very major hurricane, and it could be one of, if not the most major hurricane we see this year. I want you to take this situation very seriously. What we're going to do is we're going to move on, and we're going to take a look at a few maps here from the National Hurricane Center. Uh, the hurricane force wind speed probabilities, their key messages for Hurricane Laura. Again, the peak storm surge, and then the total rainfall expected. All right, now here we are taking a look at First off, our hurricane force wind speed probabilities. And as you can see, we have an 80 to 90% chance in those darker reds. Uh, and in the golds, anywhere in the yellows and golds, we basically have a 50% chance and above. So it's really that western Louisiana and eastern Texas range. Uh, but the greens means it's possible. So if you're in any of these shades, you are possibly going to be looking at hurricane force wind. Uh, this is a very major wind situation as well. I know the storm surge is the biggest threat for this one. But wind is also going to be very, very major factor as well. Now, this is the key messages for Hurricane Laura. This is going to be updated very soon. Again, for the latest information and the latest life-saving information, I highly recommend you check out the National Hurricane Center. They're going to be updating very frequently for this storm. So I highly recommend you seek guidance from them. Uh, but here is their key messages for Hurricane Laura. And what I recommend you do here is just pause this screen and just read this, especially if you're expecting... Uh, impacts if you're in very eastern Texas or western Louisiana, even eastern Louisiana, anywhere in Louisiana, I would say, 
I highly recommend you pause this and just read this through. This is very thorough and it's going to give you pretty much all the information you need is right here on the screen. Uh, so I highly recommend you pause that. But what we're going to do here is move on and we're taking a look at the peak storm surge forecast graphic. Also, I recommend you pause this and just take a look at your area. But as you can see, for Galveston Bay, we're expecting three to foot, three to five foot storm surge, uh, two to four foot st storm surge to the west of you, six to nine foot storm surge to the east of you, uh, and then ten to five or ten to fifteen feet there for western Louisiana. That is the peak of the storm surge. Again, that's where we could see it reach thirty miles inland. A uh, very, very serious situation, even just to the east of you, 8 to 12 foot storm surge, 4 to 7 foot storm surge there for eastern Louisiana portions of the more eastern Louisiana coast. That is still major storm surge. It's that 8 to 12 and 10 to 15 foot though that is extremely catastrophic. Uh, that's very major and could obviously lead to devastating impacts. 2 to 4 foot there for very eastern Louisiana and even there for coastal Mississippi, which still could cause some major damage, especially if you're right along the coast. So this is very widespread throughout the coasts of Texas, Louisiana, and Mississippi. Very dangerous situation. I highly recommend you pause this screen as well and read the disclaimer down there at the bottom right. Uh, that'll give you good information as well. And then last but not least, here's our expected rainfall. If you're in the greens, anywhere in the greens that is, you're expecting under four inches of rain, which could range from you know very light amounts of rain to quite heavy, uh, but yellows is where we start to see the moderate amounts of rain, four to six inches. Oranges is six to ten, and then now we have a red area that now extends into the coasts of Louisiana and Texas. They're right on the border. That's where we expect ten to fifteen inches of rain. So not on, not only are we expecting the storm surge to bring flooding, but I mean ten to fifteen inches of rain. Now all of a sudden you're looking at. Uh, Flooding from the rain as well to go alongside the devastating winds that could come with a Category 3 or 4 hurricane. This is a very, very catastrophic situation. So I highly recommend you stay tuned to the National Hurricane Center. They are going to be bringing frequent updates as always with this situation, especially if you live in these regions. I think you should be evacuated by now, uh, but definitely stay tuned to those updates. Anyway, for today's comment of the day, I asked you guys, now that we have you know more updates, I asked you guys days ago, uh, how strong we think this storm will get. But now I asked you guys again, and Raining Gladiator said, I think it'll be a Category 4 storm because of how favorable the Gulf is and previous storms have grown very strong very quickly in this region. Uh, and I highly, I, I definitely agree. I think Category 3 or 4 uh, is a very big likelihood at this point. Uh, and really, I posted to my Patreon how similar this situation is to before Michael. Uh, and it's a very similar situation. I, I recall that storm not being forecasted to be a category four or five yet earlier on in the forecast, similar to how we've dealt with Laura. It was not expected to be a category four. You know, obviously I don't think this one will be a category five. Uh, obviously it's possible. Obviously that's worst case scenario, but again, it was expected to be weaker and then the Gulf overperformed. And that's exactly what happened with Michael. That's the similarities. All right, now for today's patron highlights of the day, I thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our diamond patrons, Mad Birds and Mark J, alongside our, di our platinum patron, Donna Carnes. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Please, please, please be safe if you live in Louisiana or Texas or any of the surrounding states as well. Uh, please evacuate if it's advised by the National Hurricane Center or the National Weather Service. Please seek those warnings. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Again, be sure to share it with your friends, family, and social media. I will see you guys in the next video.